I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned into the NFL on EA Sports. Tonight's matchup features two quarterbacks who will be trying to lead their team to victory. It's Newton's Panthers going up against Brady's Patriots. So let's get you up to Foxborough as we check in with our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Larry, we are about an hour's drive southwest of downtown Boston in the area known as Patriot Place, Gillette Stadium here in Foxborough. Coming up, we've got what should prove to be a good one between the Carolina Panthers and the New England Patriots. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. On first and ten, here's Brady. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. Seven yards on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Now Brady throwing on second down. Gronkowski's got it on the crossing round. For Gronk in week eight, it was ho-hum, Charles. 109 yards and a touchdown catch of 53 yards, which broke Stanley Morgan's team record. He now has 69 touchdown grabs in his career. Stanley Morgan, the former University of Tennessee star, that's a big record that Gronk just broke. But when I watch Gronk play, I can't help but smile. He plays with such a joy, such an evident joy of what he's doing, and he does it at a really, really high level. That's why he's the Madden cover guy. Brady now to throw. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And just like that, it's third down. Brady going to try and throw on third down. And unable to connect. If he had caught it, it would have been a first down. Instead, it's fourth. Today's NFL, these big guys are featured receivers. They move all over the place to try and find good matchups. And they had one. They were just unable to complete the pass. Here we go on fourth down now with Brady. A surprising move here on the opening drive of the game. And the Panthers are going to get it back in excellent field position. They'll come out in the pistol. Now a first down throw for Newton. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be a second down. Now that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. There's Newton now on second down. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. Back onto the field comes the New England offense. And earlier in the broadcast, we were talking about Tom Brady and his mastery over Buffalo. 26-3 against them with his win in Week 8. And New England three games up already in their division. Not unusual for them at all. When you start a season, you think New England and the AFC East and who might be a second team that can challenge for a wild card. But Tom Brady and what he does against Buffalo kind of reminds me of when I play golf against you in the local Muni. 
That is your track. You own that one. And that's how he does it against Buffalo. The local muni, you mean municipal course. That would be correct. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt. And look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, you find big 87. And the starting crew defensively for Carolina. Luke Kuechly is absolutely amazing. Maybe the best middle linebacker in the game. Not only is he cerebral, this guy's athleticism is off the charts. Brady will try again on second down. Slant route caught by Edelman. And he's brought down. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. The former seventh-round pick, Julian Edelman, just continues to have such a productive career. And has made himself into a receiver. Remember, he was a college quarterback, and not just a productive one, a very good one. At Kent State, right? Yes, a great leader, a guy who could make plays with his feet and his arm. Got to the NFL and had to convert him to being a receiver and was drafted that way. And that conversion, <laughs> oh boy, it's been good. That one goes for 16 yards. It sets him up first and goal. At 6'6 and nearly 270 pounds when a ball goes in the air for Rob Gronkowski. Seems like most people always bet on him. <laughs> and rightly so. I can't imagine how you can make a play on the ball that's going to affect him. He seems to just kind of shrug off defenders. And you talk about uncovered downfield. Yeah, he just puts a hand up and says, throw it. I'm going to go get it. So there on that play, offensively, they were in the crossing route. Defense was in zone coverage. So as a former DB, how tough is it to defend that? It's really difficult because your natural inclination is to chase the receiver and maybe leave your zone. So you have to have discipline in order to talk to your other coverage guys and let them know that that receiver is crossing from your zone to the next zone. He's coming your way. Make sure you have him. And then when the ball is actually thrown, secure the tackle. And then moving on crossing routes, if you miss a tackle, it usually results in a big play. And it's a New England Patriots touchdown. So a quarterback scramble, certainly a pass play, but he saw something, tucked it, and got in the end zone. A lot of quarterbacks, when they scramble, they're scrambling to create more time to throw the ball downfield. In this situation, as you noted, he tucked it and took off. Great play by him. Goskowski now, after the touchdown, he'll send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And the Panthers coming out now. And last time, the turnover on the fumble. And they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drive going, and pushed it past the 50-yard line, so they felt like they were in striking distance. And to come away with nothing, not a good feeling at all, to put it mildly. Now they can't afford to do that again. Yeah, now can they get that bad taste out of their mouth here? And here's the offense today that hopes to get off to a strong start. On second and ten, Newton. And this will complete right side to Funches. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll lead here to a third down. Still in search of the first down after that last completion. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Devin McCourty picks it off. And he's able to get it back here to the 43-yard line. Now the Patriot offense set to take over again. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustments and no big plays by the defense to knock the ball away. On first and ten, here's Brady. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Whenever I see a drop like that, I have to kind of take a step back and check myself a little bit. So used to seeing those big guys make big-time, spectacular plays that when they drop one, I have to remind myself, we ask a lot out of these guys. Block and catch the football, not easily done in today's NFL. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 15 and a fresh set of downs. 
We can talk all we want about football being a game of strength and brawn. It's also a game of mismatches. Trying to hit the tight end Bennett, but it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a very good return as he takes us all the way up to the 35-yard line. Here come the Panthers now, set to take over on offense. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Try to lay one up deep. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. They were looking to get it to Kelvin Benjamin there, and that'll bring up second down. And quickly, let's check out the New England defense. Rob Ninkovich is one of those great gems that got polished up over time. Whether he's rushing as a defensive end or playing outside linebacker, he's awfully productive. We know it's not an easy job to go and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Flush to his right. He can run for it, and he will. And he gets it down to the 32. No move to get the offense off the field. They're going on fourth and five. And, partner, I would guess that in his headset, he was hearing from his coach, it's third down, don't take a sack. And in this case, he's able to avoid the pressure and get out of there. He doesn't get the first down, but he does turn a possible loss into positive yardage. Or it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the Patriots' defense is going to take over on down. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. A pass for negative yardage, obviously no good. Maybe he shouldn't have thrown it, or maybe he shouldn't have caught it. I think we were seeing it at the same time, weren't we? Maybe you let that one go, right? Because you can see the lost yardage about to develop. But that goes against every instinct of a receiver. They're taught to catch everything. So it's really hard to be mad at him and yell at him for trying to make that play. So here we go, first and ten now. They slot Gronkowski outright. Into the red zone, it's Brady. Over the middle, Julian Edelman, it's complete. It's a gain of five on the play, and that'll make it second down. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver who has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. Brandon, with the way things are going with Tom Brady finding Gronk. Is and he'll take it into the end zone for a Patriot touchdown. Julian Edelman, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Patriots add on to their lead. And a touchdown there to help them expand the lead. All you're looking for is as much separation between you and the other team as possible. They've got to feel good about what that touchdown gives them. Goskowski now after the touchdown. He'll send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20, and his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. The Panthers' offense here, they get ready to head back on the field. And last time this unit was out here, costly turnover, and then that turned into six points. They've got to make amends. And how many times have we sat in meetings with coaches? He's got a man complete. A big play that time, Newton to Benjamin. 45 yards. That 6'5", Kelvin Benjamin, is so hard for defenses to deal with. When you open up the dictionary and you look at that NFL definition of uncovering, you find Kelvin Benjamin, just what you talked about. His size, his catch radius where he can get, you can put the ball almost anywhere, he can go up and get it. Remember how they won a national championship when he was at Florida State? Late game drive, put it way up there on the top shelf, and Kelvin Benjamin got it. Now it's Newton. He was trying to get it to his fullback, Mike Tolbert, and it's third down. Receivers work all the time on making sure they catch the ball, haul it into their bodies before they turn and run. A little bit of loss of focus on that play. Ready, 
Throwing on third down. Newton. He's going to rifle one deep. It got his man complete. And he'll take this into the end zone. Touchdown, Carolina. Kelvin Benjamin, 33 yards. And that one makes it 14-7. to And the Panthers have got it back to a one-score game. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he will be brought down here at about the 17-yard line. The Patriots offense now, they work their way back onto the field. And they'll be looking to build off of a nice drive last time, a drive that really relied on the quarterback. Making good decisions, distributing the ball well, distributing it accurately, keeping it away from danger. A really nicely run drive. But now the defense, what adjustments do they need to make in the passing game? Pass rush, pass rush, pass rush. Whether it's the guys up front, or maybe you bring additional guys, but you've got to disrupt the timing of them throwing the ball. Yeah, we'll see if they can disrupt it here. And Gronkowski's got it, complete over the middle. They get him 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. And now some teams use the running game just to bludgeon people. I think that Brady to Gronk does the exact same thing for them. Long, short, medium, they know how to connect. In ways that sort of revolutionized the quarterback tight end relationship. They can go, as you, you've told me before, they go medium, they can go short, they go long. And the way that Gronk is used, he's not just a tight end. Oftentimes they'll put him on the backside of formation as a single wide receiver, and he runs routes exactly that way. This is complete to guess who? Gronkowski again. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30 yard line. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. Throwing left side, he's got Gronk complete. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up second down. Seeing that play and understanding just how tough it is to cover tight ends, especially the ones running around the NFL nowadays, Makes me glad I didn't make it in that league. I would have had a really difficult time. But now you get to sit up here with me. Yeah, and that's fun, isn't it? And what a really nice game right there on first down for them. Brings up a nice second down for them. After watching him drop that slant, I can hear my old coach's voice ringing in my ears right now. You can't run with the ball until you catch it. Trying to get those rack yards before he secured it. Malcolm Mitchell out of the University of Georgia was the intended receiver. And that'll bring up a fourth down. Really good Smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. It would be a very makeable field goal try from here, but instead they're going to go for it. Easy. They slide Gronkowski outright. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. To throw is Brady. He's going to leave this for his running back. It's complete. Give him two yards on that play. And on fourth down, they're able to convert and move the sticks. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Over the middle, that's taken in by Gronkowski. They'll give him eight on the play, and it'll be second down. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pickup on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. And he'll be brought down here at the three-yard line. And there they went crossing route against the zone defense. What do you think of that? It takes real coordination between the passer and the receiver because you've got to read those zones and where the open spots are and be on the same page with the guy throwing the football because sometimes you're throwing it in front of the zone sometimes you're throwing it between the zone sometimes the receiver is going to just kind of find a spot and what we call sit down and present himself to the quarterback and throw it there it's a tough read but when they're in sync it's really effective and he fires one that's intercepted a great read and it's picked off
I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. We've got a good one on tap today, and there's going to be two quarterbacks ready to get it done on the gridiron. It's Rodgers Packers going up against Newton's Panthers. With that, let's get up to Charlotte, North Carolina, as we bring in our broadcast team of Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage of the NFL takes us to the Carolinas and Bank of America Stadium here in Uptown Charlotte. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Green Bay Packers and the Carolina Panthers. And he'll probably wish he reconsidered here. It'll cost him 10 yards now with a new rule as he's down at the 15-yard line. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these teams, special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light there. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. 11 yards on the pickup, and the Packers are going to have a first down. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Well, it certainly appears that in this game, someone has decided they're going to open up their playbook. First quarter, and we see that play. I like their style. Rodgers now to throw. They completes it to Jordy Nelson. Nelson had his second best output of the season in week eight. 94 yards, Charles, and a touchdown as well. Nice to see him rounding into form, even though they lost the game at Atlanta. Because let's face it, when the season began, oh, Jordy Nelson's back, right back to what they were doing before. He was coming off of a significant injury and had to get his timing back, as well as that timing with his quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. And it looks like that's being worked out quite nicely for Green Bay. The 26-year-old Cobb was out in week eight with an injury. What does that do with him now? Montgomery was out as well. How does that impact things for Aaron Rodgers and company? I think in a big way because Randall Cobb's one of the better slot receivers in the game, but he also can swing back and play running back for you. It's not just a gimmick. He actually can carry the ball inside and to the perimeter. And here's one other thing. It cuts down on worrying about trick plays from Green Bay. Randall Cobb was also a quarterback at Kentucky and can throw the option pass. There's Newton. Steps away to his left. Caught left side by Funches. And he's brought down after a good game. A pickup there of 36. And the Panthers are going to get a first down. On first down, Newton. He's going to rifle one deep left side. Now a battle for the football. It's caught. It's a touchdown. Kelvin Benjamin. 38 yards, and the Panthers are going to take a first quarter lead. So a one-handed grab in the end zone. Nothing much more rewarding than that for a guy catching it. Not at all. And with what we just saw there, that type of a one-handed catch, what's next? Maybe they go up and almost Velcro with their jersey in the ball. That's about all that's left. That play, simply spectacular. So a one-handed grab in the end zone, not much more impressive than that. Now trotting out there, the Packers getting ready to go. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The men really need to keep where they miss. Then they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. They come out here in the eye. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was in the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. And here are the defensive starters. In your old position, you get to talk about the secondary. The best athletes on the field, Brandon. Ah, debatable. Well, we'll see how this goes today. Well, the defense loses him. It's complete. Touchdown, Packers. Jordy Nelson, 75 yards. And the Packers are within an extra point of tying this thing up. And on that one, able to catch it, also able to have the wherewithal to take it in for the score. And how about the phases of a successful catch and a completion of a play? 
look the ball in, secure the catch, and then, of course, the run after the catch that ends up in the end zone. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good, so they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan and thought there were some holes in the defense, and they exploited them the last time out. Let's see if they can come back and put together a similar drive. And we'll see if they can do just that. When we look at this unit like we are now, Greg Olson has become such a reliable target in this league. Loves to be considered the number one option in the passing game in the offense he plays, and he lives up to it. Knows the defense is set for him, knows how to beat them. And a peek at the defense for the Packers. Mike Daniels continues to get better and better with each year. A nice run stopper inside. Newton to throw, dancing to his left. And he gets it to punch his complete. And he's brought down after a good game. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. We often, with Cam Newton, talk a lot about his legs. Don't forget about that arm. He can throw it on a rope. He can loft it. He's got the touch that's been developed throughout his career. But the big part about just watching him throw it, it seems almost effortless. Even in today's NFL, when we think of the tight end position now as really a glorified wide receiver, we're still asking a lot of those guys. They have to block as well, and every now and then, they don't come down with the football. Second down following the incompletion. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Newton. Looking for Benjamin, but it's intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he'll bring it all the way back, just a yard or two shy of midfield. Now the Packers get set to go. And they will simply, Charles, be looking to duplicate what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right, to be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. I'm not sure that you'd call it a trick play, but they definitely showed some imagination there. I wouldn't be surprised if they want to come back and show this play a few more times before this one is over. He'll buy some time right. That's caught inside the 20. And he is down deep into Carolina territory. Of course we think of Aaron Rodgers as a pocket passer, but you and I both know this guy's a pure athlete. He can get outside and make plays with his legs as well. Yeah, showed it right there outside of the pocket and on the money. Out to his left. And Cook has it left side. Give him eight on the play, and it's a second down. Boy, the evolution of the game and how these guys on plays like that can get out of the pocket, keep plays alive, it just makes things so much harder for defenses. It really does, and we're talking about an era in the game where the quarterbacks are the most athletically gifted that we've seen in a bunch. I mean, when you talk about collectively, it's unbelievable. So their ability to move is practiced now. It's not necessarily, oh, he just took off and you guys figure it out. When he takes off, everyone knows where to go now. They know how to run routes, change things, make themselves presentable for the quarterback. It's a lot of time that they put in on it. It's not just your static one, two, three. This is where the ball goes anymore. Oh, how about this call down near the goal line? And he'll take this into the end zone for a Green Bay touchdown. Ty Montgomery taking it in. And the Packers are able to cash in for six. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. Here are the Panthers now as their offense comes back out onto the field. And the interception last time on the opponent's side of the field, certainly not what they wanted. Put it mildly, that is so frustrating because that signifies there's a drive going on. You're in a good spot. 
Great place to run some of your best offense. Instead, they turn the ball over. Yeah, turn the ball over last time. See if they can avoid doing it here. This offense missed Jonathan Stewart when he was out, didn't it, Charles? And now he's returned the last two games, two touchdowns in each of those affairs. And you and I both know how coaches always talk about identity and trying to seek that for their teams. Well, Jonathan Stewart gives Carolina that on offense with his ability to get tough yards running inside. Having him back will really help out the offense. Stewart is the lone setback. To throw is Newton. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Jake Ryan, he's the one that got to him. He takes him down for a loss of nine. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Here's Newton now on second down. And he can't find anywhere to go with it, and he goes down. A well-designed corner blitz that gets him for a loss of eight yards. Third and long, it's Newton. He's going to fire one deep over the middle, and he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Well, they went for the big play there, but that drop, could really hurt their momentum. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. And they're going to go soft on the corners. They will go for it. Now Newton. He's going to go up top again. And this is incomplete. Boy, a real head-scratcher there. And the Packers are going to get the football back in excellent field position. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go-around. So they complete the pass, and now they face a second down. Oh, design run for their wide out. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Ty Montgomery with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Packers add six to their lead. After the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Carolina offense as they get ready to take over here. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for them. Didn't happen also showed confidence in the defense. Mm -hmm. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. Time running out here on the play clock. They go play action here on first down. Ten yards on the pickup there. And it'll be first down Panthers. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Now Newton on first down. Eluding the pressure right. And he fires one incomplete. Well, while we have a second, I have to ask you what you dress for for Halloween. It was tough. I had to try and narrow it down because there's so many different great options. So finally I decided to just go 
as your bodyguard. I thought that would be kind of cool. That's funny, because I was going to say I went as Charles Davis. Oh. <laughs> Some guys in the league, though, they got into the act, didn't they? Yeah, they certainly did. We saw Richard Sherman at a press conference last week, and he revealed that his wizardry is not just on the field, it's <laughs> off the field. And I had a chance to talk to Cam Jordan of the Saints and asked him about that, and he said he had it narrowed down to two different superheroes that he was going to wear for Halloween because the kids wanted him to. A pretty rocky start in this game for the guy throwing the ball. Already has thrown one interception. Almost threw a second one right there. All he's doing right now is giving the defense a whole lot of confidence. Newton now. To, and that's caught inside the 35. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. Well, they just treated third and long as simply an opportunity to make an even bigger play. Normally, you're just trying to pick up the first down and you know where the sticks are. They took this thing way downfield. Confidence in the receivers to go up and make a play, even with defenders around them. They give them 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back with more from Charlotte after this. Stewart is the lone setback. They'll come out in the pistol, rolling to his right. Able to shake him off. It'll be a gain of eight yards, and that'll make this a second down. Okay, he's not going to get the first down, but this is still a nice job of buying some time and then running to get to the sideline and get out of bounds and avoid the big hit. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. He's got it for a Panther touchdown. Devin Funches, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Panthers are able to get this back within a touchdown. And, partner, they found a gap there on the post. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. And they don't get it. They tried for the two-point conversion there, but unsuccessful. Gano now following the touchdown here to kick it away. Here comes Montgomery now to return it. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The Packers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. I love it. Let's we'll see if they dial it up this drive. When you see passes knocked down by those guys I call the frustrated fullbacks, the linebackers, you know that in their zone coverage, they were able to drop, see the ball thrown, and react to it very quickly. They come out here in the eye. Here's Rodgers. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Not only was that a three and out, it was their third straight incompletion on this drive, and they didn't even think about trying to run the football. Now they have to give it up. Twelve yards on the return that time, and the Panthers will get it here as they take possession. Carolina getting set to take the field. And that last drive, so effective in the passing game, resulting in the touchdown. Maybe not many people were focused on the trenches. There was good protection there. Excellent protection. So now defensively, you've almost got to get down to those starters blocks like you're a sprinter. Get lower than those guys on offense and find a way to roar through them or around them to get into the face of the passer. Easier said than done, though. Way easier <laughs> said than done. But they've got to try something because right now they're just cutting them to shreds. To throw on second down is Newton. Buying time to his left. And this is caught. It's Greg Olson. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that and have explosive plays, 
that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that will drive a team towards a victory. They get 25 yards out of that one. And it'll be a Carolina first. And quickly, they get to the line. Cam fighting. He lost the foot. And now the rookie's free. And the Packers pick it up. He's at the 40. And a big return will get him all the way down to the 35. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. And where the ball is now, you got the field goal pretty much in the bag. Now do you try for the end zone a couple of times? I don't think there's any question about it. You might get a gift of six points rather than the three that you just noted that you feel like you already have. Be aggressive, go after it, and try and get those points. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Now after the fumble recovery, it's Rodgers. And it's incomplete. Boy, he doesn't drop many like that one. Second down. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Rodgers will try again on second down. And time Montgomery has it complete. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Rodgers now on first down. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now inside the red zone, the offense will operate. They go play action here on first down. That's caught at the one. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Jared Cook in the final seconds of the first half. And the Packers add on to their lead. Now after the touchdown, here's Crosby to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Carolina getting set to take the field. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. That's it for the first half. Two more quarters to go. We'll have plenty more to see after the break. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. That'll be taken in the end zone. And in hindsight, probably should have stayed where he was as he'll only get back to the 16-yard line. Out come the Panthers. They'll have it first on offense in the third quarter. They have the ball here for the inaugural drive of the second half. Pretty big deficit, though. We'll see what adjustments were made in that locker room. And I never wanted to make something more important than it actually is, right? I don't want to create more hype than what is there. But, but this is a, do that? I'm doing it, though. <laughs> this is a really important drive. And we often talk about teams scripting plays to start a game. A lot of them script to start the second half, too. And they're scripting something that they expect to get them into the end zone and back into this game. We'll see if that script is a good one for them. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. And he gets it to Funches complete. It'll be a gain of 16 and give him a first down as well. And they're going to speed things up here. And fits the exact right word. Over the middle, there's almost always traffic, so anytime you're a receiver in that area, you're not just focused on catching the puck. Funches is free. Touchdown, Carolina. Devin Funches, his second touchdown of the night. And the Panthers, they're able to draw a bit closer. 
I know Paul Revere talked about by land or by sea, right? You know, one by land, two by sea. He didn't mention air because right now we're seeing a big-time performance, aren't we? That's two touchdowns so far in this game. Where did you pull that one from? And, you know, every now and then I actually listened in history class. <laughs> and you're just a scholar all the way around. You're reading all the time. I like that you fit that in the broadcast. <laughs> you know, I just grab a nugget when I can. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. Now a play fake here on first down. Sliding out of the pocket. He's going to let... Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this into enemy territory across the 40. Looked like the defense put pretty good pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. Steps away. Caught left side by Cobb. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, he was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. Here's Rodgers to throw. But this is Montgomery with a grab over the middle. It'll be a pickup of only a yard, and it'll bring up a second down. And now they'll try the end around. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. In on the tackle there, Luke Keekley. In my book, that's running the ball well, but with intelligence. How about keeping the clock moving, staying in bounds? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with a lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end-of-the-half situations that you worry about the clock. It's throughout the game, and with a lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. First and goal here from the nine. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. The evaluation process in today's NFL does not take into account as much bulk as it does speed. And that's what we're seeing with the linebacker position. Those guys that can run, they can play at any spot because they can make plays on the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. Jared Cook, the tight end, was the target. And that'll make it third down. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. Rodgers now on third and goal. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. Normally, he's pretty reliable. Usually catches what's thrown to him. On that play, he simply dropped it. So now on fourth down, Rodgers will give way to Mason Crosby for the field goal try. And Crosby puts it through, and that will bump the lead up to 11. So put another three on the board. And all things considered, a good opening drive here to begin the third quarter. It sure was. I think as a head coach, you're happy to come out and put a little drive together, take the three points, and build on your lead. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Now onto the field, here come the Panthers. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. Now a clash of bodies here, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-round pick, Demarius Randall. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. And they're behind the sticks here a bit now, dealing with a second and 12. They come out here in the eye. Now Rodgers throwing on second down. A fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Thomas Davis. And they'll start out with great field position at the 47-yard line in enemy territory. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. 
Try to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And that one falls incomplete. Looked like he might have had position there, but he couldn't hold on it at second down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage, your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. A good pick up there on 20 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height. Sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because you're... And look at this. Cam Newton intercepted a third time. A great read, and it's picked off. The Packers offense now. They get ready to head back onto the field. And following the interception, we'll see what they can put together on this drive. I can hear my old college coach right now. He always used to tell us before every game, the team making the fewest mistakes will win. But they're hoping is that that last mistake is their only one of the game. Coaches, that's all they talk about, turnovers, right? <laughs> Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. Second down now after the incompletion. They'll throw again from their own end zone. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. On any passes in the middle of the field, anyone who's going after the football is going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. From his end zone, it's Rodgers on third and long. He's going to let this one go deep. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. Here's Jacob Shum now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. Now the Panthers offense, they get set to come back onto the field. And with three interceptions thrown already, we'll see. Do they, do they rely more on the ground game here? They may have to change things offensively to try and settle things down, not just for the guy throwing the ball, but for the rest of the offensive unit because his confidence has to be shaken a little bit. And you just wonder, is the backup going to start to warm up a little bit over on the sideline? Second and ten, Newton again. He's going to rifle one deep left side. And both guys were there, but it falls incomplete. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. The intended receiver was Corey Brown, and it's fourth down. So the defense forces a three and out, but they got some help along the way. They threw it on first down, and when they were unsuccessful, it became second and long. Didn't get it again on another pass. Went third and long, and they almost had to put it in the air. They may want to rethink some strategy going forward. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Here's Newton finding time. And this is, oh my goodness, he pulled it in one-handed. It's a big-time play there on fourth and ten. 43 yards. And we're back now in Charlotte. It's the Panthers in possession of the football, but facing a deficit here as we get to the fourth and final quarter of play. On first down, it's Newton. Being chased out left. And an alley to run. Give him 16 on the pickup. And that leads to a Carolina first down. So an instance there of Cam being Cam. We know he can use his legs. And with that big body, it's hard to get him down, even if you get a clear shot on him. Plus, he moves it a lot faster than what people think. And boy, does he have fun playing the game of football. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. After all the preparation, all the practice, a play like that will absolutely break your heart. They had everything they wanted, just unable to complete it. 
in the end zone a big time drop. It's a 10 yard gain there and it sets him up now first and goal. And now they're in the hurry up. Now it's Newton. And that's one of his advantages of a passer is now with his height setting back there in the pocket firing it over the middle he can really see everything clearly it is and i know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways all right you don't have to be his height to make a great play but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through he just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball fighting for the end zone he lost the football it's out and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back the packer offense now ready to get back onto the field and on the last go around they really couldn't get anything going they had to punt from deep inside their own territory which means they're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule what they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense. Get a couple of first downs and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second down here after the incomplete pass. In his own end zone, it's Rodgers. Over the middle, it's Jared Cook. 15 yards through the air and a first down. He's played a great game. It continues right there, even with this lead, confident to throw the pass and have the reception made. There's no doubt who the leader of their team is, is there? There's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. And now we get a timeout called on the defensive side of the ball by the Panthers. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth quarter. They come out here in the eye. Here's Rodgers to throw. They'll roll it. He's got a man complete. And he's brought down after a good gain. A gain of 32 that time. And defensively, they just don't seem to have much of an answer for this passing game. Not at all. Look at the confidence that's exhibited here with that type of a lead. Clock on their side. Instead of running it, they're still throwing it, trying to pick up first downs and keeping the football. Looking middle it's incomplete it's always tough for the guys throwing the football when they think they've got a completion and the ball's almost there and then someone sneaks a hand or two in and bats it away back to the air on second down it's rogers caught by montgomery and he'll be taken down at the 46 yard line five yards on the pickup and that's going to lead to a third down third down now following the completed pass Again, they'll throw with Rodgers. He's going to loft one deep left. This is caught inside the 15. It's a big play there for Green Bay. 41 yards. That has to be frustrating for defenders. Third down. They take a shot way downfield. There is good coverage, yet they still come down with the football and pick up a big game. Steps away to his left. Randall Cobb, the intended receiver. And now it's second down. My high school coach, John Ford, used to say all the time, if you're in a bad situation, laddie, don't compound it with a bad decision as well. And I think that's what we just saw there. Harassed in the pocket, and he throws into double coverage anyway. He called you laddie? He called me laddie, and that was the nicest thing he called me. This will be caught at about the five. It'll be a pickup of ten yards. And they'll be faced with a third and in inches. Time for a break. We'll come back and see this one out after this. Trying a little razzle-dazzle on third and short. They didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. Well, partner, if we had their entire playbook in front of us, I'm not sure we would have picked out that play as the one to run in that situation. How about the guts of the offensive coordinator? Dialing that one up into great success. Now a play fake here on first down. Touchdown, Packers! Jared Cook, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Packers add six to their lead. In order to lead in a game, you're going to get plenty of contributors, but that's his second touchdown catch of this game. He's one of the key guys in this one. And you better believe he'll be looking for the hat trick here as this one continues to go. That's fielded in the end zone. 
They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And the Panthers coming out now. They're down big here late. I don't know, you just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge. It's almost a like, coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's <laughs> get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better. Yeah. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. Throwing is Newton. Benjamin with it over the middle. And he's brought down after a good game. Well, even after all those interceptions, he's not deterred. Still confident to go deep at work there. I think all the old rules about playing that position still apply. If things go wrong, you still act like you're the best player out on the field. You still carry that supreme arrogance with you and continue to fire the ball. I've seen guys have games like this, and this is where you find out if you're great or not. Can you overcome some interceptions and still lead your team to victory? Now Newton. Funches with a catch over the middle. And he takes it down deep into Green Bay territory. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. From the red zone now, Newton. And for the fourth time tonight, it's an interception. Picked off by the Michigan man, Jake Ryan. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Now trotting out there. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. And it's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the... And got his man complete. And he gets it.